I want to graph this rational expression. But first, I need a game plan. Don't worry, I got you. We got a game plan. A game plan. So what do we want to do? One, we want to get the zeros of the numerator. Why? Because that's where it's going to cross or bounce the x-axis. When I say it, I mean the graph of your rational expression. Then, you're going to get the zeros of the denominator. Why? The zeros of the denominator are your vertical asymptotes. Dot, 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 dot. Then, you're going to test the intervals. That's when you put them on a number line. And you see whether it's positive or negative in those regions. Why? Because that's going to tell you whether or not your graph is above or below the x-axis. Then, you're going to get the end behavior. Oh, behave. Zero, oblique, or somewhere in between. It's the numero finis and the denominators. I'm sure you saw that video. So you're going to stick to the game plan. Zeros of the numerator, zeros of the denominator. Test the intervals end behavior, and then you're going to put it all together in one pretty picture. Now let's go draw that picture. Now that we have that game plan, step one, zeros of the numerator. Oh boy. So I take that numerator, man, x squared minus 2x minus 15. And what do I want to see? I want to see where this is equal to zero. That's going to give me my zeros. So I got a factor. Teach me how to factor. The factors of 15 that subtract to be 2. Are there any? So you got to get that. You got to get that 5 and 3. X and X. The signs are different and the big ones negative, positive, and it's still equal to 0. So I get my zeros. My zeros are going to be a minus 3 and 5. Step 2. Find the zeros of the denominator. That's going to give us our vertical asymptotes. So I go, step two, Ooh, I take that denominator, x squared plus 7x plus 10. Then I set it equal to zero. So I'm looking for the factors of 10 that add to be seven. Are there any? So I got to get that. I got to get that five and two, x and x. That says the sign to the same, and they're both positive. Positive, positive, and it's still equal to zero. When I'm positive, I can get these vertical asymptotes by setting each one of those equal to zero. And I find that my x's are going to be at a minus two and a minus five. Okay, ready? I need to test intervals. So I'm going to put all of those zeros on one interval. And I want to test it in fully factored form. My numerator was... Should have moved that down. My numerator was x plus 3 times x minus 5. And my denominator was... Get out of here. x plus 2 times x plus 5. I'm testing this rational expression in fully factored form. So here we go. I put my zeros on the number line. Looks like I have a minus 5. And then I have a minus 3. And then I have a minus 2. And then I'm going to have a 5 over there. Mm -hmm. And I want to test these intervals, not those values, the values in between them. So I look at a value to the left of minus 5. Let's take minus 10. Man, I'm not looking for the actual retail value of the function. I'm looking for its sign. So I put a minus 10 right here, making that a minus 7. Nonetheless, it's minus. I put a minus 10 right here. That's a minus 15, but that's minus. I put a minus 10 right there, and that's a minus 8. Great, but it's still minus. The minus 10 there makes that minus. Then you count the number of minus signs. If it's even, your product and quotient are going to be positive. If it's odd, your product and quotient are going to be negative. So then I see an even number of negative signs, so it's going to be plus over there. All right, I'm ready to test something in there. Maybe minus 2. So I put a minus 2 up there. Minus 2 plus 3 is 1. That's positive. A minus 2. Yeah. Oh, I need to test a value in there. Minus 2 is over there. What's in there? Minus 4. Sure. 
So then I go, and I'm looking at this. I put a minus 4 in there, and that's going to be minus. I put a minus 4 in there, and that's going to be minus. I put a minus 4 in there, minus 4 plus 2 is minus. I put a minus 4 in there, a minus 4 plus 5 is positive. And it isn't too curious that we switch signs at minus 5 when we switch signs at the factor plus 5. Now I go and I check something in there. Why don't we do minus 2.1? Something just a little bit smaller than that. So we put a minus 2.1 in there. A minus 2.1 plus 3 is positive. We're switching at that value. Then I put a minus 2.1 in there. Minus 2.1 minus a 5.1 is a minus 7.1. Nonetheless, it's minus. A minus 2.1 plus 2. The minus 2.1 is bigger, so that's still minus. The minus 2.1 plus 5, that's positive. I have an even number of minus signs, so that's plus in there. So now I go and I pick something in there. I pick 0. So I pick 0. Bam! I could have picked anything in there, but I just like picking zeros. So then I pick 0 and I put it in there. 0 plus 3, positive. 0 minus 5, negative. 0 plus 2, oh, change the sign. At, oh, and then 0 plus 5 is plus. Odd number of minus signs, so this is minus. Now we're going through this kind of quick. Remember, you can pause it. I'm over here. Bigger than 5. Bigger than 5 is mm, 10. So I put 10 in there. That's 13. It's positive. I put 10 in there. That's 5. That's positive. Switched again at that sign. I put 10 in there. That's 12. It's positive. I put 10 in there. That's 15. It's positive. So then it's plus because it's all coming up plus. Now what? We look at the end behavior. Oh, behave. Can you see that from there? I'll switch back here. Yeah, I'm right there. To see the end behavior, you look at the numero finis and the denominators. If they are the same, it doesn't go to infinity and it doesn't go to zero, your asymptote. It goes to the quotient, to the leading coefficients. And here, both my leading coefficients are one, one, one. So my horizontal asymptote, step four, that's going to be at y is equal to 1. Now let's put it all together in one pretty picture. Ready? Ready? Okay. So then I'm right here, say, what do I want to do? I want to put my zeros on there. Wherever my zeros, my zeros happened here. Oh, bad angle. There. Yes. At minus 3 and 5. So I'm over here at minus 1, 2, 3. I put a dot. I'm over there at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I'm going to put my asymptotes, my vertical ones. They happen at minus 2 and 5. So then at minus 2, I'm all dot 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 and then at minus 5, I'm all minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. Dot 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 Now what? I test my intervals. Well, I already have that. That tells me I'm going to be above this line over here. I'm going to be below that line over here. I'm going to be above that line right in here. I'm going to be below that line right over here. And then I'm going to be above that line past here. So we can put our end behavior on there. That happens at y is equal to 5, or y is equal to 1. That would be a horizontal line all the way across, but I don't like to draw it because it confuses. So then it starts and stops at 1. Ready? 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 Let's put it all together. Yellow. It's positive to this axis, meaning it doesn't go down. It must go up because it can't run into an asymptote and stop. Back it up. Stop. Now I'm in between minus 5 and minus 3. In between minus 5 and minus 3, I am below the line. So I see it comes from minus infinity and hugs up to that dot. What happens after that dot? It switches signs. It switches from negative y values to positive y values. And that's why it crosses and goes up this asymptote. Now what? Here it, uh, in between minus 2 and 5, it's below the line. So it comes from the bottom, now it's here, and then what? It crosses and goes to the end behavior. And that is graphtastic. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Whew. 
pots and flour. What's next? Mm -hmm.